Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're hailing from. Welcome to another developer experience office hours here on OpenShift TV. We are joined by the one and only Serena from the future today. I'm so excited, but we got something extra, extra special planned today. I won't ruin the surprise. I'm Chris Short, executive producer of OpenShift TV. You can find me at Chris Short on Twitter, cshort at redhat.com. I'm going to hand it off to Serena Nichols, who's got her right name in there today i'm I so do. happy <laughs> zoom thank you for making that easy uh but please serena introduce yourself what are we talking about today hey everybody i'm serena nichols i'm a, a product manager for openshift developer tooling and today we're going to be talking about cons uh, customizing the openshift work console um in a bunch of different ways and then we are also going to be talking about kicking off a contest for customization of the console so I will hand it over to Ryan to introduce himself. Ryan. Aha, uh -huh, I got my mute go. button hey. figured out. <laughs> Ryan Jarvanen from the uh, OpenShift Developer Advocate team. I'll be hanging out in chat along with Chris Short here, uh, answering all your, uh, as many questions as I can handle, um, <laughs> send them to us. Uh, also, uh, I host alternating weeks with Serena. If you have upcoming topics that you would like to see on the show, uh, feel free to drop those ideas into chat as well. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much, Ryan, helping out here. We appreciate it. And like Ryan said, next week, he will be on to answer any questions you have. This week, he's in chat to answer any questions you may have. So thank you very much. Really appreciate that. One big happy team here at Red Hat. Awesome. And we also have Ali. Ali, you want to introduce yourself as well? Hey everyone, Ali Movem here, uh, OpenShift Console PM, uh, here to just support Serena and answer any questions you may have in the chat. So hi everybody. And you and you started this all last week, right? You started like, on an like, admin session, I think. Yeah, we kind of did some demos of how to configure uh, the admin side or actually uh, the entire console with like uh, the, the console links, YAML samples, all that good stuff. So if you haven't seen that yet, go go check out the hunt for uh, that real quick for everybody. So stand by for a link. But yeah, please continue. Cool. All right. So let's talk about uh, customizing the OpenShift console for the developer. So um, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> so admins can customize the console for developers. So we're going to go through a few different ways here. Okay, and hopefully. This is going to update. Yep, we got. It. Okay, so the first thing we can do is we can customize the console logo. Um, I'm going to try to do this on the fly, so it will be really interesting to see if this works for us. Um, I think Ali, you might have, you might have tried it last time. I'm not sure if you did or not. Um, but we've got some some code here that you can reference. And I think Chris, I think you're going to take this and convert this to a PDF and put it somewhere so that people can actually yes. reference it later on as well, Let right? Me, yes, you have it so. linked in the doc and I have to go drop it as a PDF. So hang on. Awesome. So that's to... great. Uh, so I'm just going to look at my ahead. little, yeah, please go for it. Yeah. So I am going to, let's see. Ah, no, of course, there we go. I'm going to check out my notes here. Um, so I've got a couple of commands. Let's see if I can figure out what I'm doing. I have to go to the proper directory first. And then I'm going to look at my notes here and take a look at to see what I need to do. So in my directory that I have today, what we have is we have a, a um, image called cube.png, right? What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over and show you what OpenShift looks like when I've already logged in. And you see that I've got the um, Red Hat OpenShift container platform logo up there. So what I can actually do is I can just run a couple of commands um, to be able to apply my own custom logo. So the first command I'll do is create a config map and I'm just going to copy and paste this guy here. And again, this is in the presentation that we have available. And then once that is complete, all I do is do an OC apply with the CR. And let's see what happens if I go over to the console. And let's see, I'm gonna, let's see, should I 
do a refresh. Oh no. Connection uh -oh. closed. <clears throat> well boy. What happened? Let's see. Okay, hold on. Live troubleshooting. Here we go. Did you not give the demo gods an offering this morning? <laughs> I, I did. I don't know what I did. <laughs> I'm supposed see. to do that for what everybody. Did I didn't do good enough. What I'm sorry. <laughs> How is that going to happen now? Did I really kill the cluster for the entire right. team? Like, that would be absolutely horrible, wouldn't it? Error connection oh, boy. Closed. Okay, so check if you have OC still. Or is that gone? Let's see. Let's just do OC get pods. Anything. Okay, yeah, so that's, it's still okay, there. so everything's terminating. So, so that's not good. <laughs> that is not good. That so, was an awesome demo on my end, wasn't it? <laughs> was this one of the shared clusters? Because yeah, back, yeah. Oh boy, that's not going to be good. Whoopsie. Uh, okay. okay. So. so let's see. What can we do next? Why don't we just continue to talk about <laughs> yeah. and maybe Ryan, I know you have a cluster on your side. Maybe you could try to do this uh, as we speak on your end and see if possibly you could demo as I share what's going on um, as far as what should happen. <laughs> see if we can get that going. Yeah, um, so yeah. that's I'll so work on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. cool. Um, all right, so the next thing that you can do, and this is pretty tough because we don't have, I can't show this now. We can add a new Helm chart repository to your cluster. So this is the content that you would put in, oops, whoopsie, inside of um, a file, API version helm.openshift.io, and you follow this information. And then we have uh, an additional Helm chart repo that you can add here. Um, and then when you just at OC apply that file name, that will also include an additional um, Helm chart repo into your cluster. So let's see, does right. Ali, might you have a cluster that's available? You know what? I have a cluster that's in good enough shape. We can beat you do. it up. Oh, let's like. try it. Okay. So let's see. You're gonna take over sharing. Um, yeah, let me, let, me, let me grab the the YAMLs and fun stuff first. All right. Let me make sure I got that up here, and we're gonna share. Awesome. We're gonna do, 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 do. The funny thing is, is that I have to do the slides and the thing. Okay. Okay. I can do this. Believe in you me, everybody. Oh. Believe in me. Here we go. The host is going to share his screen. Oh my gosh, I get a pinwheel. Oh God. <laughs> uh -oh. That's what I do for getting this, doing this yeah, from a Mac. Not, it, <laughs> it is. Yeah. The 13th all right. 13th of October. Did oh, of course it is. I should have extra sacrificed. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. I literally click share screen and nothing's happening. Okay. There we go. All right. Let me get rid of some of this stuff for y'all um cluster galore so you want me to do this right yes i would like you to do that that would be awesome you're gonna need my cube.png though right uh yeah if you don't mind or Let's i can see. create can something i slack that PNG. over to you yeah slack it over to me why not let me do that hold on uh, for a second you're going to oh, really doing a great demo here customize go, go that's, fun. that's exciting yeah, I mean, <laughs> what else do you need? Oh life? boy. Okay, metadata name, well, cost or whatever, that's fine. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna make a project here. OC new project. Uh, we'll we'll just call it the future. All no, all all Kubernetes like. <clears throat> Sorry, did you slack it over? I see just a new run red message. It. Hang on. That is it. You know what? Let's do that. Come on, you can download. download. Sorry for everybody in the chat, but I'm oh, pretty yeah, yeah, sure yeah, no we worries. are completely <laughs> focused on trying to get some work in. <laughs> so we'll follow up uh, with you guys in a second. <laughs> yeah, I can't even type right now. Hang on. Download. Yeah. Where'd this thing go? What was the file name called? Cube.png. Cube.png. Yeah. Dot there. All right. Then we want to apply. So OC apply, or I guess create in this case. 
Dash F customize logo. You can do it, I believe. Error. Cluster already exists. Okay. Interesting. Oh, okay. So I can't do create. I need to apply. Duh. So this should work, hopefully. Configured. All right. Now let me jump into. Well, that explains why uh, my computer's being slow. There's YouTube playing in the background. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. So what should I expect to see happen here if I hit refresh? You should see the Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform logo to go away. Okay. And be replaced with the cube.png. So if you if you go to the cluster admin section, look at the operators. You're going to see the operator is getting updated. So very bottom. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, admin. Yeah, yeah, see, I'm listening to the admin guy. What am I thinking? Cluster settings. <laughs> <laughs> Go to cluster operators. And you should see the console operator. And it says it's already available. Oh, OK, hang on. Let's see. Yeah, it did something just now. Okay, there we go. Wait, wait, wait. So, hold on. Wait. Uh, look at the message right there. Custom logo seems to grade the custom logo. Part. No, that was from the third. My bad. Oh. Updated conditions as expected. So nothing changed here. Or did it? Nope. Nothing was applied apparently, even though it said. As everyone saw, configured. Did you do both? Did you do the OC apply too? Because I can't see, I don't know if it's me, but might OC you be apply. able to make that font a little larger? Absolutely. Sorry, my Thank bad. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. all right. Uh, you know, that's always something that I check for <laughs> everybody yeah, <okay>. else. <laughs> and now I have to check So my font was large, but I crashed. Your font right. is small, but you're running. <laughs> All right. If that is that is if that's right. not insane for everybody, I'm probably do broadcasting a whole 4K image right now. Who knows? Um, it says unchanged. So, oh, reload. Do we have a cube PNG file in here somewhere? No. No. Okay. Weird. All right, let's look at the YAML then, folks. Customize logo. Is that what we're expecting? Yep, operator open shift by let's drag. Mm -hmm. um, logo follow up custom. Product name. So did you create the console dash custom dash logo? No, I did not. Step one, yeah, you need to create the config now. That holds the, the, okay. the image in there. Okay, yeah. okay, so I need that first. Yeah. All right. Serena, you got a code base or anything you could sh send over? Hi. Or is that something in the slides as well? Hang on, let's check. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I just tried running that OC create config map line on another cluster, and it's using a from file that has a, a local uh, Okay, path. so I can do this. Right. Yeah, okay. you have to do Hang that on. first piece first, and yeah, got and it. reference yeah, the yeah, PNG yeah, that it. you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh, crap. <sighs> Come on, hands. So hold on, actually. Back, back, back. Slacky yeah, there we go. I just need perfect that. Now I should be able to do the apply. I mean, the apply should have worked anyway, right? It should have put the, the line. You here. would yeah, think that. Still, you got. I still got unchanged. Unchanged. Though. So yeah, now we're finding bugs. Ooh. Now this is interesting because <laughs> I tested this yesterday Hang two on. or three times and it worked perfectly fine. I'm sure it did, but I'm sure somebody created the config map first. Okay. So I might have to blow this well, away. Well, I did, yeah. Wait, so yeah. Let's, let's go back. I want to show you guys something else too. Go back to oh, okay, hang on. 
Okay. What's up? Go to under home. You're going to see explore. Click explore. And then type in console. Filter by, yeah. Come on, keyboard. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it helps if you spell it right. There we go. All right. What's okay. up? Now, click, I believe, the bottom one, which is the operator. Yep. And go to instances. All right. Open that bad boy up and search for logo. Did this thing get updated anytime recently? Custom logo sync a minute ago. Ah, okay. So it might have taken a minute. Yeah, I think you're looking at the wrong object. Boom, there it is. <laughs> Aha, voila. <laughs> so it just there took a few go. seconds. You know what? I, it's funny. I had a break during the last show and my wife was trying to print something. She was like, can you turn on the printer for me? I'm like, I think it's always on. Let me go check. And I was like, yeah, it's on. Just be patient. It should show up in a second. And she's like, oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> Literally just happened to me on the show just now. <laughs> just give it a second. It'll show up. There you go. Kubernetes right there. There we go. So yeah, once you get it straightened out, it's pretty mm -hmm. easy <laughs> to figure yeah. out what to do. Once so you follow now, the instructions uh... <laughs> in the slides, which I'll get back to uploading exactly. here in a second. Exactly. <laughs> Let me close these slides. <laughs> get the right Goodness me. window All over right. here. All right. So we did this. We're good here. So do you want to try to do the next thing for us this game as well? What do you want me to call this? Give me a file name, everybody. Home repo. So I lit so I just um, slacked you a home chart repo CR oh, um, you file. Did, you did. Yeah, you did. if you want to use that. So, um, but what I'd love to do as well is have you kind of go into the developer catalog <clears throat> or go into the developer perspective. And let's show people what it looks like today, right now, when you go in. So if you switch over the developer perspective mm -hmm. and just go to the ad page. Um, so you can skip that tour. You can you, you can tell I haven't you done do this whichever. in this cluster yet, can you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No problem. And if you um, click on Helm charts right there, which is the second to last one on the bottom, go. right? Oh. Yeah. You can see it's going to filter for us, and you will see that there's only two Helm charts in there right, right. now. Yeah. Oh, now I'm wondering what <clears throat> version of software you have. What version? This of is four six have. nightly from okay. the thirtieth. So. So let's yeah. see what happens. We'll try yeah. this now. So, um, if you go back and take a look at the slide, it does give you a little bit of. Um, Oh it will show you slide number four. It shows you what that file would look like if you wanted to add an additional Helm chart repo. Like so what we've done, yep. Yeah, what we've done is I just gave you uh, the Helm chart repo CR okay. you want me to load file, that? which includes that text in it and that's it. Okay. So if you do an OC apply dash F with that file name. Helm repo chart CR. Sorry. What should then happen is we can go back over to the Created. Helm chart catalog repo, and hopefully you'll see more than two Helm charts in that repository now. Here's hoping. Let me hit refresh. I would do a refresh. Aha, check that out. Look at that. Nice. All right. Cha-ching. So, now, if you go to <laughs> if you go to search mm -hmm. in the left hand nav underneath monitoring, so it's like the third or fourth thing down on the in the left nav on the black um, navigation. Got it, got it, got it, yeah. Got it, yeah. And now oh. underneath resource, um, hit the resource drop down and type in Helm chart if you don't mind, and it's going to map to Helm chart repository. So click on that. Right. So now what you see is. Da, da, da. Oh, okay. Let's see. So now what you'll see is you have your um, new Helm chart repos shown there. So right. if you wanted to, you could delete delete that by you could delete it by uh, on the right hand side, click that and say delete Helm chart repository. Cool. Yep. And you can go back over to the Helm repo. I mean to the Helm chart. Do you want me to actually delete it? Yeah, go ahead. 
Okay. I'm just showing how easy it is to kind yeah, of get no, no. back to the initial state, right? So now you can go back over to the ad page and okay. click chart repos again. Yeah, Oops. and you should just see two again. So now, okay. There we go. So again, very easy way to kind of add additional Helm chart repositories, remove, um, remove things as well. And so that capability is now available in 4.6. Um, and what we're going to be doing in 4.7 is amazing. if admins want to actually remove Helm charts from the console, what they'll do is they'll go in there and remove all the Helm chart repos. Right? I'm sorry, Helm chart CRs. And then you will no longer see Helm in the navigation. You'll no longer see, when you hit add, you'll no longer see the Helm um, tile. Again, that won't be till four in the future, possibly four seven. Um, so, but that's kind of how we future. foresee that. Yes, that's how we foresee yeah. that changing in the future. So those were the two big pieces that we were gonna start demoing. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, cool. awesome. And did anybody, Ali, did you want to say something there? I didn't know if you were going to. Oh, sorry. My bad. I probably should have given Ali the chance to say something. No, no, it looks great. I mean, okay. Long, so keep going. Okay. okay, so cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue on with. Um... Oh, the other thing we can also do. Okay, so you can also remove an existing builder image from the console, right? I don't know if any of you guys have done this before. So now that I say that, I am in a cluster now. Good. This is my own cluster. Um, so if I kill this, nobody should get hurt from this. Um, okay, so <laughs> let's go over. I'm gonna go into the developer perspective. Again, this is a brand new cluster, so I see that. Um, if I go to the ad page, and I'm just gonna go into some project. If I go into the samples, I see, what is it, 10? samples by default that are shown here. One of them, let's just say, let's say Ruby is gonna be the one that I'm gonna remove. But you can see that Ruby's here underneath samples. It's also, if I go into the developer catalog and I click builder images, you can also see that Ruby is here. And the other place that it shows up is if you do an import from Git, these builder images are also shown here. So I, I can see Ruby here. Now say I'm a cluster admin and I don't want to provide access to that builder image for my developers. What I would do is I'd go to the administrator perspective. I would go to image streams, go into the OpenShift namespace, and then I'm going to find Ruby. I'm going to bring that, I'm going to go into that YAML. Let's see if I can, maybe use a little excluder here. Okay, so let's see. A little tight for me here, but let's say I'm going to look for tags. And where I see tags, boy, it's 21 spots. So let's see where I see tags and builder, I'm going to remove the word builder, the tag that's called builder here. Okay. Now I've got multiple versions, so I'm going to remove it from each one of these versions. Uh, let's see. So give me a couple more seconds here. We'll keep going through this. So some of the tags say hidden. What does that do? That's a good question. Yeah, I was about to say. And we want to figure that one out. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But I do know. Um, oh, it's based off of versions. So, uh, yes, exactly. Each version, uh, I'm, I'm doing this for each version, right? So, okay. um, so that this will is, not, because I don't want it to so show up. So, this is at like all. every single version of Ruby that we've ever put together exactly. for yeah this is some extreme <laughs> yaml engineering yeah, i used yeah. to i used to build um custom builder images for node.js um years and years ago um and i would edit these image stream yamls and add in a bunch of custom tags and and uh, you can set the the icon to be displayed here 
Um, there's a lot of nice, uh, or, or actually maybe that's in the template uh, YAML, but uh, there's there's a lot of uh, nice details you could you can set uh, in those uh, image stream files. Um, so now what you can see, yeah. So now I, what you I, can see is gone, gone from samples. I'm gonna go to import from Git. It's no longer an import from Git. I'm going to go to the developer catalog. I've got builder images and again, it's gone from here. So that's the way that you can easily by editing <laughs> YAML, easily remove <laughs> the builder images from being shown inside of the console. That's we, also, and I don't have, I'm not gonna demo this, but this would also be the way that you'd add one, right? So you right. would add that into the OpenShift um, namespace. You would then ap apply that appropriate label to, um, to an image stream there. Um, you would put that image stream inside of the OpenShift namespace and then add that appropriate label and then it would show up in those places. So again, pretty, pretty cool. Um, I don't know, Ali, did you investigate the hidden thing or is that something that so, we want to take a look into going yeah, forward? Yeah, let's go select one of the builder images. Like, um, How about we do dot net? From your app. We do dot, no, what's no, that? From, from oh, that. from app, yeah. okay, sure. There's a question in chat. What version of console or cluster are you using right now? Right now, this is a 4.6 okay. nightly. Okay, so I was using so, a 4.6 nightly. Mm -hmm. uh, Serena's using a 4.6 nightly. I think we're all using 4.6 nightlies here. So this would this stuff, uh, Narendev is asking, is this available in the playground? Oh, and, the builder image thing is available across the board. This is right. the way that you've done it in, since 3.x, right? Right, exactly. Um, yeah. If you want four six nightlies, you can go to try.openshift.com yep. and you go ahead and grab it and you can install it today. Right. Mm -hmm. It's available to everybody. Yeah. I mean the the nightlies are available and they're out there. It just depends on where you want to land. Um, but the the ability to spin it up, you can do it with the insistent installer, you could do it with, you know, the the existing installer straight AWS GCP, the whole nine yards. So yeah, go. Go to try it at openshift or i'm sorry openshift.com slash try i'll drop the link in chat and you can kick the tires on it yourself all you want wow that didn't work my bot broke oh no oh, oh no. Bots. So there it is, is so here are the versions yeah this yeah. is where they're showing up and yeah. that's where hidden would remove it so you could still have ah. it. This is image. so if you want to like update this and go find 3.1 el7 and you put that hidden tag on it, it will be removed from this list. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. Do we want to try to do that? I mean, or do we? Yeah. Oh, we have time. Okay. We have I mean, do you have time? Did, I mean, it's Well, I know. We've got a half hour. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's say, okay, that's how you would do it. Let's, let's move on to something else if that's okay. Sounds good um, to me. So, because we have, I think we've got about seven or eight more slides that we want to make sure that we do discuss here. So let's go on. So the next one would be um, installing operators to expose operator back services in the developer catalog. I'm pretty sure everybody pretty much knows how to do this, but I'm going to really quickly do it just in case, right? Um, and just to show you, if I go in, so this is a brand new cluster. If I go into the catalog and I look at operator back services right now, I've got nothing in there, right? Because no operators have been installed. So say I go to the administrator side. Now I'm still, I'm cube admin. So I'm gonna go into, or I'm cluster admin. So I'm gonna go to the operator hub. Um, and I'm trying to remember what I was gonna install. Um, Thank you. I think I was gonna do Kafka. Yeah, it was good. AMQ streams is what I was going to do. And when I do install, one of the things I also wanted to do is a shout out to uh, Ali and his team on the um, OLM side that they did a really nice job updating this UI. So now I'm doing the, uh, the operator install and this has given us great feedback to show you exactly where you're at. You know, it's taken some time, the operator is being installed. It might take a few minutes. But it's really nice because if we talk for a few minutes, what we'll end up seeing is it's a, it gives you a really nice indication of when things are complete um, and the ability to fly back over and view things inside of the, the namespace that's available. So I think this is a huge improvement and I think customers are gonna love this piece specifically. 
Um, so now you can see again. Ah. Ooh, nice. We'll see what happens. Um, We'll see what happens here. Uh, hopefully, it will install. Okay, install. Yeah, succeeded. look, you're actually getting real feedback. Yeah. Of what's happening as before exactly. you have to wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is great because what used to happen for me is I would go over to the developer catalog and be like, "Oh, where is it? Where is it?" Right, and it wasn't there yet. So now I can actually sit here and wait and see. And within a couple of minutes, it does come up and say that it's completely ready. Um, and then we'll pop over, we can pop, pop back over to the developer catalog and show what has been um, then enabled and available in the developer catalog for that developer. And again, you know, based on the operator, you might see zero or many things in the, in the catalog. So cool, so this is all complete. Install operator is ready for use. You can view the operator, it shows all the CRs that are available, but even better. Hopefully, when I go to the developer catalog and go to add, go to the catalog, see now I see there was 10 operator back services that were exposed by that single operator, which is awesome. So again, this is another way, obviously, that um, admins can customize what's in the developer catalog. They can utilize operators that are in operator hub. They can create their own operators to install their own things as well. Ryan, I think you had even talked about having a concept of creating an operator to install a Helm chart. You had chatted about that a little bit at one point. I don't know if you want to mention yeah. that one. Uh, yeah, and I have a, a link somewhere. Let me drop a link to this. Uh, we have a learn.openshift scenario that is surely in need of a, a massive update. Um, by, also, just thought I'd mention, uh, the content is open source, so we do accept pull requests if you're interested in helping us um, update this content. But the uh, learn.openshift uh, website has an operator framework scenario uh, that walks you through taking an existing Helm chart and converting it into an operator. Um, if you did that, then you could essentially use the, um, you know, uh, admin um, install uh, install an operator, uh, but then have the results of the operator uh, exposed in the developer catalog, uh, as we've seen here. So that could be another way to uh, get Helm charts um, directly to the developers who need them. Um, without using, a, a, you'd miss having that uh, Helm repository registry, um, and uh, active registry running, I think. Um, so it'd be a slightly different model, but um, another kind of uh, avenue to, to investigate potentially. Yep, great, thank you. Okay, so here's another thing, and I think we've gone over this in other office hours, but you know, users can still customize their own navigation and then developer perspective. So again, super, super quickly, I can do this real quick. Right now, what we do is the console comes in 4.5, the console comes with two sections. So it's like the third section in the nav is where it says config maps and secrets. This is the section which is configured per for that your specific user. Um, so we pre pre-select things or pre-add config maps and secrets, but it's super easy to remove this if you wanted to. And if pods was something that you found was a, a resource that you specifically liked to look at more frequently, what you do is you go to the search page, you search for that resource type. And on the right-hand side, you see the add to nav. Um, as, that as I select that link, it comes up on the bottom left-hand side. And you know you can add as many things here or as re remove as many things from that third section as you like. One interesting thing that has come up lately is a couple of customers that we had talked about, uh, talked to had asked if there was a way for, um, for cluster admins or for admins to set up the navigation for, to preset it for all, all users going forward. We don't have that capability today. It would be really interesting if people thought that that was a, a good requirement. So like I said, currently we pre-add pre config maps and secrets. If you guys think that it's a good requirement to allow an admin to set what those um, predefined areas are on the bottom, but then still allow the user to make additional changes, definitely let us know. This uh, page shows a link out to the blog as to how to do this as well. So feel free to take a look at that. 
Um, let's see what the next piece is we're gonna look at. Okay, so we don't have too much time. The other things, oh, futures, what's coming next with customization for the developer themselves on the developer side. One thing that we're working on the design for and how to implement in a very, so post 4.6 um, is customization of the categories in the developer catalog. So as you all know, we have, uh, I think these, these categories might have been the same since 3.x. There's been some um, requests to add more subcategories or allow the admin to actually remove subcategories. Um, so that's something that we're looking at and that will be included in a future release, most likely in the shorter term. Um, and then the other piece that we have, and I think I'm, I'm just gonna pop back over to the console really quickly. So if you go to the project page on, in the developer perspective, we have this tab called project access, right? And this allows us to share a project. Um, let me just create a new project. Uh, this allows us to, to share my own project with somebody else. So if I wanted to add access to this, I could put, put in somebody's name and then select a role. Currently, the roles that we provide in this list is hard-coded to admin, edit, and view. So again, one of the other um, requests that has recently come in from a couple of our customers is, hey, we, we provide our own custom roles. Is it possibly to have those shown up here in the dropdown rather than have these be these predefined roles that we have? So again, that's something that we're looking at in, in the future, but in the shorter term. So um, again, it would be interesting if you guys have any messaging in chat. If you think that's interesting, that would be great uh, to hear if you think that's a requirement on your own. I'm gonna go back into presentation mode and I'm just gonna switch back over to this now. This is future for um, both the admin and the developer side, right? So Ali did, did a great job in introducing quick starts and bringing those into 4.6 in the console. And we've implemented them on both sides for so the admin and the dev side. Um, but what we're going to be doing in the 4.7 is we're going to be introducing uh, an extension so that operators as well as admins can provide their own quick starts. So on the dev side, what I could see that be is, is you know, well, I mean, across the board, it helps to onboard users. But on the dev side, I could see that being utilized to help ensure best practices for application building, monitoring, et cetera, right? So admins can create their own quick starts. Um, and have those offered to, to their users. So look, you know, there's a link in the right-hand side here. Look more about quick starts here. There's, Ali, maybe you could quickly mention what Brie has in that. Um, yeah, so um, we've, repo? Created, we've created like guidelines, uh, documentation of like how the market should look, what's, what's configurable, um, essentially kind of explaining uh, and describing what the future CRD is going to look like. Uh, we have our initial draft of it. Uh, I have a link to the PR. Let me put that in the chat. So take a look uh, when you get a chance. But essentially, yeah, you're showing it all here. Um, this is exactly what we're, we're attending to show you all, like how to come and create your own uh, quick start for your operator. So let's say you're the couch based owner and you want to uh, have a, a quick start come show and, and set up say a, a developer database or a shared database or whatever kind of mode you want you'll be able to come in put all your steps and help people get that all configured and set up and, and up and running or even deploy a sample app with your service that you're deploying to kind of showcase how your, your service works so it's it's a pretty cool extension and uh, we're hoping that people take advantage of it yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I think in 4.7, you're going to see an increased amount of quick starts as well. Like I think in 4.5, what do we have? I think we have seven available. And I'm sorry, in 4.6, we have seven available that are shipped with the, with the console. Um, but in 4.7, you'll see quite a few more that are shipped, um, not only with the console, but added through operators. And then, you know, everybody, please take advantage of this. It's a, a pretty cool pattern um, that we think is going to help with onboarding people and getting people started quicker. So let's see, the last piece that we're going to talk about today is this OCP for console customization competition. So Andy Block's not with us today on the call, but he was with you guys last week, I think, when we started talking about some of the customization. Mm -hmm. um, and he brought up this really great idea to 
why don't we open this kind of kind, kind of customization competition out to our customers and um, the community and see if people would share with us what they're doing with the supported OpenShift 4 mechanisms. So I think last week, Ollie went through a bunch of them um, with you guys and also shared a, a presentation if I'm not mistaken. And we've also gone through a few today, crashed a cluster is it along the way, <laughs> um, but also you know <laughs> shared some of the things that were available. And there's, there's much more available, whether it be in blogs or, or uh, online documentation as well. But what we are, are planning and hoping to do is that um, people will register today if you're interested in it. Once we get your registration um, through the survey, what we'll do is send an email with all of the rules and um, how to proceed. And uh, the first 20 participants to register as well, as long as they submit their follow-up entry by November 30th, will receive a t-shirt. Nice. And then um, submission should be entered by the 30th. There's gonna be a GitHub repo that you do your um, entrance with all your information on. Uh, what, and those details will be followed up through the email. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a uh, OpenShift TV session on December 1st Mm -hmm. to talk about some of the submissions that have come in. And part of the voting process will, to be, will be to include some of online voting from the community and the viewers to help impact who the winner is. winners are. And the top three winners are going to receive a cool OpenShift hoodie. So, um, so that's kind of what we got. And uh, we'd love that's to see what you guys have. Awesome. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm super excited about this. Uh, this, to me, I mean, I, I know it says console customization competition, but this is kind of the essence of how architects or team leads, in my opinion, mm -hmm. package up uh, Kubernetes-like experience and make it uh, consumable without forcing Kubernetes and all the related terminology down everyone's throats and, and having that be a, a prerequisite to productivity. So hopefully this, this is really a great way to have uh, more experienced OpenShift users really show how they can slim down the experience, customize it, make it mm -hmm. uh, really uh, productive for um, more average engineers. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this effort. Uh, thank you, Serena. Uh, this looks really cool. Yeah, well, it's a joint effort, believe me. We've been on a number of calls prepping for this stuff. So uh, yeah, I think um, another thing, you know, of course, on the PM side, what we're also hoping is that people who are entering this will also kind of open up for a customer empathy session around future ways or future needs to customize the console. Um, you know, we're always looking to hear, as you guys know, we're always looking to get more feedback. And We love and, feedback, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and understand like where we want to go with this. So if there's interest from the participants as well on doing something like that, I know we've talked about um, possibly being able to set something like that up. I, my guess, I'm not sure what the time frame would be because that will be December with holidays and shutdown. Maybe we'd wait till January to do something like that. But I think that would be really exciting too as part of that yeah I, I mean i don't yeah i haven't even thought about like shutdown and what that even looks like for the channel to be honest with you i haven't thought that far out yet so yeah. yeah like that's that's a good point like yeah uh the holidays are coming i have to address this yep <laughs> to do <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully you're not going to be uh on for thanksgiving but you never know no, Never mind. Uh, no, we, I, <laughs> I, I, I take a very, very firm stance that if, if it's a national or red hat holiday or whatever, shutdown is shut down, right? Like yeah, we can. don't broadcast. Um, so yeah, that's my stance on the topic, but some people oh, think we should have something sometimes. And it's like, oh yeah. Hmm. I mean, dead air play a replay but i mean you can play everything on demand anyway so you know the playlist is there for everybody i don't know like there's there's some happy medium there but we like to keep it live here on the channel so that y'all can interact with us if you have questions you can ask them and actually get answers not just be talking to the ether kind of thing yeah right all right so i'm gonna add a couple of things into the chat 
Awesome. One is the registration form. I think you might have already done that, but I'll yeah, do it. Yeah, I did, but you know, repetition yes. is always good. Yeah, exactly. And I'm also going to put a shout out for our Google group, right? So I think mm -hmm. you guys all know we have an OpenShift Dev Users Google group that we're trying to um, utilize to for, for conversations and email as well as to announce what's going on in, in this developer experience office hour. So feel free to join on that. Um, and we love, we're hope, really hoping to see some people register for the competition. Yeah, please register, register, register. Like go now. Do not, do not wait. Do not pass go. I don't know. What's it called in Monopoly? No, pass go. Collect $200. Okay. Do that thing. Yeah. <laughs> All we right. We do have some time left. So I wonder if we should go back. I don't know if we were able to monitor much of the chat. I'm sorry. Say that again. I'm wondering if we could go back and monitor some of this chat. I don't know if we're, you guys. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's that. some chat, like, like, let's talk about it. Right. JP date asked a, a question, right. That's like, talks about like our development process, right? Like I kind of answered it. Um, but it, it, it is worth speaking about, right? Like, so we continue supporting four, three, four, 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 six is that coming out soon. Uh, we're talking about four, seven potentially today. Develop, are we developing 4.8, 4.9, 4.10, 4.11 features all at the same time? And technically, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> so maybe uh, Serena and Ali and Ryan, y'all had thoughts on this. I type mine in. I'd, I'd like to hear y'all's. Yeah, supporting uh, uh, about our support for past versions. Well, um, I mean, it's more than that. It's like, what are we like we're developing stuff for the future now we don't mm -hmm. really ever know when a, something is feature complete until it's actually feature complete right so we have timelines we have expectations but you know life can get in the way and sometimes features slip sometimes new requests come in and takes precedence over something so something that might be fully baked but not ready for release, you know, for whatever reason, because of some component that it needs or has a dependency on, right? Like you never really know if you're working on a certain feature, like, is it going to come out in 4.8, 4.9, 4.10 kind of thing, right? Like if you're developing on a feature today, you kind of have an idea of when it's coming out, but it, there's potential anything could happen and cause it to slip, like, you know, COVID. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think yeah. that's always especially challenging when you're doing open source work and you have other stakeholders potentially from outside the company and uh, you know collaborative efforts uh, and and not just uh, COVID and U.S. vacation schedules, but vacation schedules from In other general, parts of the yeah. world. Yeah. You know, not everyone has a, a winter holiday break like we do in the u.s right and um you know it's a yeah wrangling everyone's schedules and also shipping at the same time is especially a, a huge challenge in the open source space i think we are always going to strive for high quality um yeah. over time and uh, always try to listen to your feedback and and uh stay uh you know stay in line with how people are able to uh manage to find some kind of productivity in in their lives using open source so um yeah it's a definitely always a struggle uh especially when you're really doing open source code yeah like yeah i agree because <laughs> as a, with the developer perspective right we do a lot of integrations or we do a, num a number of integrations with things like pipelines and serverless and mm -hmm. a little bit of Kiali in here and there and, and we're doing custom code in the console based on an operator right or, which happens to be an upstream contribution so so that give and take is like Ryan what you're talking about is really interesting because it's not just what we're doing in the console itself it's also making sure that we've got what we what we need from the community and, and that operator and making sure that those things are in line. Um, I don't know. I guess all we can say is we do we do quarterly planning. We have epics, and actually, one of the cool things about Jira is that a lot of our epics are going to be a lot of our Jira projects are becoming public, right? So I know for us, for example, in the developer perspective, all of our four seven epics we're going through a process right now to try to make them public so that people can see 
what we're planning, like what our acceptance criteria are for the epics, as well as uh, where we are in the process. Is the design complete? Is mm -hmm. the development ongoing? Where are we with testing? So it will be pretty cool to see or to to have the community and our customers see where we are with pro in the process of, of a specific release going forward, which is different than anything that I've done at Red Hat to date. So I think it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I think one of the things that that seems kind of encouraging to me, uh, there's always, you know, a tension between how fast do you move? How fast can you can you really push things? Um, I think with the V4 OpenShift series, I think Red Hat is almost moving, moving even slower than they did with V3. And the evidence of that to some degree are, are things like, uh, you know, almost everything is written as custom resource definitions, um, there aren't any, um, you know, before we had uh, abstractions like a deployment config and a, a templates that were kind of hard coded into our distro, but mm -hmm. weren't as portable. Now we're really working with very portable concepts and um, really making sure that we wait for consensus to be established in the upstream community before we um, buy in on anything um, because things like templates in the past yeah. ended up being uh, a differentiator that was a positive thing. But at the same time, uh, we were out of step with the Helm chart community when yeah. that kind of rose up. And so uh, jumping on templates a little bit too soon before we had the community buy in, we did a lot of discussion with Google uh, at the time. And I think the assumption and the feedback from Google was templates were going to be the de facto deal. And then Helm came up and and surprised us all. And Google right. was like, no, like we're you, going with that instead. Yeah, you're like, you never know what open source project is going to come along. And like, you might be working on something so similar. And like, this mm -hmm. happened with operator framework, right? Like, you y'all might be working on something so similar that you might learn that, hey, mm -hmm. operator framework people and cube builder people, y'all should work together. You're, you're, you're striving towards the same goal. And I was there in San Diego when, you know, last year, I think it was that, that like, those negotiations started and look it happened and you know a year later it was released or just under a year later it was released as you know operator framework 1.0 and opened up to the cncf right like somehow that happened right and there were two completely independent projects until one kubecon right like they heard about each other they're like hey you know we should probably talk at kubecon and then boom it happens right so things can change like that overnight in open source it's so cool but at the same time, it's so scary, right? Yeah, which is all good reason to take things slow, make sure mm -hmm. you get the buy-in, not just from uh, the customers, the community, the uh, maintainers, and uh, work intentionally with, with the whole community. So um, yeah. uh, that all requires your feedback and your participation. So thank you, everyone uh, in, in chat for your questions. I think I saw a question from uh, Narendev. Uh, asking if if I'm expecting to see a V5 OpenShift anytime soon, <laughs> I, I, I cannot help you with your insider trading uh, attempts, but I I know nothing about V5. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't uh, have any news on that. I, I, but uh, yeah, <laughs> when the next time I schedule uh, an ask the uh, PM hour, I will uh, mention V5. Be like, yeah, somebody asked about V5. Uh, you want to come on and talk about that? Uh, and just do like a JK at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, we don't have to take up the whole hour, y'all. There's another show coming up that you know yeah. we can get ready for, and you know we, the audience can stick around. We'll be back up here at the top of the hour with uh, OpenShift Commons briefing on. Hang on. Wait a minute. Wait for it. I'm not sharing my screen. Why is it going so slow? Ah, migration tooling. Uh, talking about the conveyor community with the one and only James Labaki from Red Hat here. Uh, yeah, like, oh, JP Day mentioned in chat, hurry up and slow down all at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, stick around for what will be a wonderful uh, OpenShift Commons briefing. And after that on the channel, we have uh, the first ever Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management show, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management Presents. So series premiere. Uh, happening at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern, 1700 GMT or UTC, however you want to put that. 
uh, GMT and UTC are different. I should fix that. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for joining. And as always, Serena from the future and Ali from the future, we always appreciate your insights into what things will look like. Folks, sign up for the competition. I'll drop the link again in case you missed it. Please sign up for the competition. Uh, the team is super excited to see what y'all are doing with the tools that they are providing. So help us out. Give us some feedback and you might actually get yourself a hoodie for the effort. So yeah, thank you all. Appreciate good. it. And sure. I think next week we're going to have a little bit of switch because I'm going to be presenting next week as well, right? Oh, you are. We work this out. Yeah. So oh. next week we're going to be looking into what we've got going on in 4-7 to date. Beautiful. So again, in the future. But, nice. Uh, yeah. I, I always yeah. like the in the future episodes. Are always want to be fun. able to share that out with the, the community. Oh, and the thank customers, you. Yeah, so. definitely tune in next week as always. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. Always, always, always office hours for developers here uh, every week. So yeah, thank you all. Appreciate it. That's good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good week.